Hey guys, we got something a little different to work on today. It's a brand new uh, Kohler SH265, six and a half horsepower side shaft engine. Uh, brand new out of the box. <clears throat> Literally just unboxed it, made a video on unboxing and talking about it, and all the specs on it and everything. And that video will also include the first running of it. This video is going to be removing and cleaning the carburetor. Now obviously this is a brand new engine so it don't need clean so we'll be able to just walk through it real quick and I'll show you what to do. Um, there will be another video on the governor linkages. I may include that in this video just to keep things simple. And there will also be another video on how to adjust the valves. I just I thought I'd make some videos on this so let's get ready to get started. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is remove the air filter housing and air filter. This air filter looks the same as a basically any Honda clone engine, the Predator engines. It's probably the same air filter and it looks like it is. Not 100% sure. It's not marked polar or anything, so it probably is just a standard, uh, I call these slant ones, the way they're made. So you got two 10 millimeter nuts right here. You gotta remove these. Some of the clone engines will have a bolt going in up here. This one doesn't appear to. And you do have to do something here. These have to be out like this in order for this to come off. This the air breather hose has got us now. You can see there's this hose that runs between the valve cover and runs over here to the, the uh, air intake. So you have to get that unhooked. So there it is. I'll show you what I did there in a second. You won't be able to see it until it's off. And this should just come right off like that. You get this little hose right here that runs out of the valve cover and it connects to this little pipe right here on the, the little tube right here. It sticks out on the air breather. So you just gotta make sure you hook that back up. It's kind of weird working on something brand new because everything is still uh, new, obviously. You don't have to worry about the uh, gaskets tearing up and everything. So now you have a fuel hose clamp. Now, if you got gas in your tank, there's going to be gas coming out as soon as you undo this line. So you got to keep that in mind. Obviously, this is a brand new engine, so there's not going to be no fuel in it. Hopefully not. Unless it's a return or something. basically ready to come off except for the governor linkage. We'll go ahead and talk about it on this instead of making a separate video because the linkage is so simple on these engines. So let me get this uh, fuel line out of the way. Just kind of pops into place so you can see everything. I like that feature having them clips on there. A lot of the other style engines like this don't have that. So let me go ahead and take the gas tank off real quick just to show you um, this linkage better and where the spring hooks up to. Um, to take the tank off on these, it's super simple. You got one bolt here. It's Allen drive on this engine. Most of them are just a 10 millimeter. Then you got two uh, 10 millimeter nuts over here. And it just comes right off. So you got this real long Allen drive bolt that goes in. See this hole right here? And this has a Kohler brand spark plug in it. I was kind of curious to see what they used in it. You take these two nuts off, and your whole gas tank will come right off, just like that. Now we can get to the linkage just show you how it's all set up on this. So this is your governor arm. This runs into the inside of the engine and works off weights that swing out. I have other videos on how governors work if you need to know how they actually work. Let me slide this carburetor out so you can see the linkage. This linkage fits down inside this plastic piece. There's just a hole in there. It just fits down in there, and that plastic piece keeps it from popping out like that. So it's just just an L shape, all it is. Then it runs over, it connects into the second hole back here. The one that's farthest back. Then this little spring right here connects between this tab and runs over and connects in the first hole over here. 
And all this little spring does, because your governor springs over here, we'll talk about it here in a second. But all this little tiny spring here does is keep tension between the linkages so there's no play in it. And that's all it does. Because if you take, it'll run without this spring, but you might get a slight surge or a slight lope because there'll be just the tiniest bit of play in the, in the linkages and this absorbs that and keeps it from surging or anything. So your governor linkage connects to this this rod right here. That's your throttle control. So there's this little tab right here. That's where the spring connects to. And it runs down and connects into the middle hole. Some engines it might be in one of the other ones. Just pay attention to what it was in. And apparently the middle one's probably just a standard and these other ones are probably just pre-settings for maximum RPMs and also a good time to talk about if you need to hook a throttle cable up to one of these this has the bracket right here for your throttle cable to go into and it'll connect on one of these uh, four holes here you may have to drill another hole or whatever to get it to work because they're not exactly 100% universal and if this piece gets in your way you can actually just cut this handle part off because it's not needed as long as you get leave the part where the tabs at for the springs you'll be good and this screw right here will set your maximum rpm so you can actually get a little bit more out of these if you want to it's not really recommended because if you run a engine like this up past a certain rpm it will blow up it will throw a rod out the side of it uh, without modifications to it so you just keep that in mind but you can it is adjustable and the main purpose of that is to fine tune it for like a generator or something like that it has to have a, an exact certain rpm that's the main purpose of that it's like if you if you're running this and say it's running at 3500 rpm the generator has to have 3600 rpm so you could tune that in and you're not going to hurt nothing you know I wouldn't take it over 4,000 RPM on a stock engine, but that's just my recommendation, unless you don't care about blowing it up. <laughs> so let me put the tank back on, then we'll uh, look at the carburetor, and I'll show you removing this here in a minute when I get the camera back on the tripod. So now that i got two hands, I'll show you a little bit better how this comes out. So you open the throttle up all the way like this, and this rod will just come out like this because it's just L-shaped and it fits down in that hole, and it'll go back in the same way. You may have to pull on this rod just a little bit and move everything. And once it locks in like that, once it's in place, even over here, it'll never come out because it's got this little slot right here. So you pop that out and unhook your spring, and then your whole carburetor comes off. And this is an actual Kohler carburetor. It's still made very similar to Honda clone carburetors. This gasket stayed on here, so we're just going to leave it intact. If you have new gaskets, you will want to remove that just so you can clean everything or in case it's teared or anything. You also have this piece over here. There's a plastic block here that goes on to where the intake goes on there. There's probably a gasket behind there where it might just be like an O-ring type seal. <clears throat> you just got to pay attention to all that. And if for some reason you need to remove the choke lever to work on, it just comes off like that. That's how the choke works on these. Very simple. Um, obviously your fuel shutoff valve is made into this, but you can take it apart to clean it if you're not getting fuel through to the, the bowl. And this uh, carburetor also has a, uh, a drain screw on this. If you see all these marks on here, this just these are like witness marks. If they see this paint wore off or it's in a different spot, that means this carburetor's been apart. So you obviously I'm avoiding the warranty on a brand new engine, but I'm not that concerned about it. If anything goes wrong with it, I'll just fix it myself anyway. So you take this off. This is what holds the bowl on. There's also a little seal in here that can come off. You don't want to lose that. Now sometimes these will pop right off. Sometimes you get a gently tap them and this just comes off and if you've been if your engine's been running uh or if you've had fuel in it this is going to be full gas so you want to you know, before you remove it as i should have said it earlier 
take this plug out to make sure there's no gas in here just to keep from having a surprise mess. So now you're left with the inside of the carburetor. And these carburetors are very simple and there's not too much that goes wrong with these, this style carburetor. So the first thing, you got this pin right here that holds the float in. You take that out. And then your float and needle valve will come out. We'll talk about this briefly. This is the type of spring loaded to hold it in place. And it's got a little rubber tip on it. So if your float ever sticks and you don't want to like shut off gas and the engine keeps flooding out or gas pouring out of the carburetor, chances are it's this needle valve or something wrong with the float. So try the needle valve first and then replace the float if it's absolutely necessary. So down inside here is a jet, removable jet. So let me get my jet removal tool. Now in a pinch you can use a screwdriver but it's highly recommended to use an actual jet tool. And these are Briggs and Stratton ones. And you want to use the biggest one that fits to get the strongest fit because the piece you're taking out is just made out of brass. So the same way with the screwdriver, you got to use a screwdriver get the one that fits the tightest. That one fits loose. So I'm going to try to use this one. This one should come right out since it's a brand new carburetor, but you never know. Yeah, it's coming right out. If this strips out, now I'll explain here in a second what the best thing to do is. So this is your actual jet, and this is your emulsion tube. So the most common problem with these, this type of carburetor, is there's a little tiny hole that runs all the way through this. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, you can kind of see how the light shines all the way through it. And it's just barely big enough. If you have like a wire brush, you pull one of the pieces of wire out and you can use that to, to clean it up with. But if you can't see through that, you know, a lot of times you just see me holding it up to daylight or light. If you can't see through that, your engine's not going to run. And the second common problem is this emulsion tube. You notice it's got all these little, all these little tiny holes all the way through here. These all have to be clean. It's got to be clean all the way through it. If that's not clean, your motor's not going to run or not going to run well. You also want to spray up through here with carburetor cleaner. Blow through here and you should be able to get air come out of here. That's where your needle valve sits. If you don't, there's something wrong with this valve or it's clogged up. So you make sure that's open up. And a little trick for doing that is stick a piece of fuel line on here and just blow into the fuel line. That way you're not you know, putting your mouth on something that's got gas and oil and stuff on it. So now you're ready to put your emulsion tube back in. Just let it drop into place like that and note the orientation of it this part goes in first and the part that's got the holes in the, the big holes in the side go in at the bottom just like that and your jet now performance modification for like a go-kart or something would be to change these jets out to get a little more fuel going in especially if you're changing the cam out and stuff which i'm not sure if there's performance parts available for these Kohler engines it probably is i'm just not familiar with it so now that you get everything clean, you're ready to put it back together. Now, if for some reason you weren't lucky and you couldn't get the jet and emulsion tube out or it stripped out or something, and you got about three options with it. <clears throat> Buy a whole new carburetor, which these are actually fairly cheap for most of these style engines. Or you can take a chance and hopefully it's not too badly, not too dirty and spray a bunch of carburetor cleaner in there then block these holes off, these little tiny holes right here then put compressed air through there and blast it until it's, you start hearing it come through hopefully it'll run and if it don't run the best after that run your engine for like a half a choke for you know five minutes and see if that'll force them holes to clear out on its own because sometimes that's all it needs um, and the other option you take all your parts off of it and let this soak in one of those carburetor cleaner tanks that uh, has a solvent in it to clean it and let it soak real good and blow everything out and hope for the best. Now to put this back on, you usually want to put the drain plug away from the, the uh, needle valve and you also got to make sure you're putting it in a place that's easy to get to, which is why this was kind of offset just a little bit like that. That way the drain plug sticking out in the place that you can actually get to. 
So now you're ready to put this bolt back in, make sure that seal's on there. If you lose that seal and you can't get the actual part for it, you can get by with an O-ring. Just make sure you don't tighten it too much and it you know, spreads out. You can also get like a flat seal or you can use a copper seal on it for like a like what you see on brake lines. That'll work too. But that's what you really want. And then you're ready to put your choke back on. Just make sure it works. Now you're ready to reinstall the car bearing. And you want to make sure you're putting it on right. You don't want to put it on like this. But the holes are slanted so you can pretty much see how it was. Make sure you got a gasket on here if it didn't stick like this one. Also forgot to mention, I just happened to see and it reminded me, this little brass piece right here is actually like an idle adjustment on this. You can see it just barely comes out there. And they make these non-removable, non-adjustable, but you can actually take a Dremel with a cutting disc and cut just a little tiny bit of a slot in it and it'll uh, you'll be able to ad either adjust it or bring it out and you want to clean through that too. There's a choke piece that came off. You can put that on after you get it on there if you want, but it's just I like to kind of do things in the same order as I did it. So again, that linkage will pop right in like that. And the spring will just hook right into that right there. And that's pretty much all the linkages. You kind of want to make sure that, that spring didn't come loose back here. Get a gasket that goes on just like that. Make sure these holes line up over here. You might want to go ahead and hook your fuel line up. Just a little simpler to do it now. Get the throttle out of the way. It just slides over on that port right there. Make sure your clamp's in place. <clears throat> now the only fuel filter these have is like a strainer in the tank. You get an actual strainer that you'll see when you're pouring gas into the tank and there's actually a little screen filter on the end of the fitting that, go, that this hose connects to inside the tank so there's no actual replaceable fuel filter outside but you can replace the piece that's in the tank <clears throat> but it's just a little bit more complicated than on like your older style engines I had one deteriorate on a a Greyhound and I put a the smallest filter I could find to fit the line up underneath the tank here. It worked. Uh, there's a video on that too if you need to see it. So now you gotta put this plastic piece back on and you gotta remember to hook this hose up to this piece right here. So it's kinda hard to do so I'll probably do that part off camera. <clears throat> Again make sure your throttle, make sure your choke and your fuel is over here in this position because it won't go on without it being there. Then you got to kind of wiggle it a little bit and get these nuts started. I'm going to get that line on there just a little bit more. I'm going to tighten these two nuts down. <clears throat> Not super tight, but you don't want them to work all work away loose either. You get them pretty snug. And your air filter goes on. And your air filter cover. pretty much done. Now you also want to make sure you don't have old gas in your tank as well. I should have said that before you start on it because you want to drain that out and flush it before you hook it up and pump all that dirt back into the carburetor. Well guys thanks for watching. I hope this uh, explains the carburetor and uh, carburetor linkages and government linkages on this look good enough for you. If there's any questions or comments feel free to leave a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, we'll catch you on the next video. So. Thanks for watching, guys.